My apologies in that interruption in service. We are on now to Phenomenological. This video is called Gutter Snipe, and this version was created by Angela Pacini in 2010 after earlier drafts. It's probably my favorite archaeological film. Again, I will not play the whole thing, but I encourage you to watch it on the VLE. This is potentially the most boring and the most fascinating archaeological movie you'll see. Angela follows the curb, documenting the stones, the trash, and telling a microcosm of Bristol's history. The genius is that it forces you to look at mundane objects, like an archaeologist, the curbstones that we step over every day, and to understand them as important in documenting not only the history of the city, but how they are tied to prehistory. By maintaining this singular perspective, she bores you into looking closer. As I said, genius. Respect the curb line. The curb can be the key to making a street look like a street. It acts like a pen to a green column. It provides continuity between adjoining buildings. Buildings have a typical life of 100 to 200 years. The alignment of a road can have an indefinite lifetime. Changing the curb line or removing the curb altogether can have a detrimental effect on the appearance of the street. Institution of Civil Engineers. Paving Aesthetics Brief Sheet. 58 seconds to 1 minute 13 seconds. A long rusty nail. Lipstick cigarette. Silver birch leaves. Chewed gum from countless mouths. Worked and painted curbstone. The presence of 19th century stonecutters and contemporary cable, water, sewer, telephone, road workers. A drain. Tarmac and sandstone rub up against each other and hoard the grimy castings of the passers-by. Plastic, soot, particulates, the remains of fossil fuels from across the centuries produced and consumed on a global level. It's what connects my house to yours, my mouth to yours. This is not a film. I wanted to explore how to practice an archaeology through video, but I'm not a video practitioner. I work in a university drama department, but they think I'm just an archaeologist. I work in a university archaeology department, but they think I'm just a drama type. What I do once a week is research and teach archaeology for screen media, thinking beyond the standard broadcast expository documentary. I don't know about available light and white balance, but I'm there in the shadows, on those screens, here, now. This doesn't work as I skip ahead and slip behind time, but then that's the point, too. Two minutes, five seconds. A ring and an end connecting curbstones Neolithic and now. Bob Jones, city council archaeologist, tells me that no one's paid much attention to the curves. These mason's marks might be saying something about where the stone was quarried, or where it was worked, or it might indicate a production batch or be a location key. My interest is Bob's Bob's, and he tells me that this is a good field for documentary research. Two minutes, 21 seconds. That just about sums up our week on archaeological filmmaking. As I mentioned previously, there is a tremendous amount of innovation with film happening right now, and a lot of this blurs the lines between technology that was previously discreet. To me, the exciting thing is that a lot of this innovation is happening in relatively low-cost settings. The creativity that we are seeing on TikTok just requires a smartphone. All of your lecturers right now are getting up to speed on recording lectures, but how far away is this from YouTuber content? I could only dream to make a lecture as good as, say, ContraPoints. We'll be looking at the rest of these subjects in week 9, as there's already too much to cover this week. But I feel like I should mention I teach heritage filmmaking at a master's level, which allows you to refine your filmmaking as it's an incredibly important skill, because everything is a video these days. Right? <laughs>